Alper Advocate over here at Astronomer, and we're back with a, another weekly episode of Astronomer Live. Uh, and today, we're going to be going over the new Astro API that was just released that allows you to finally create, perform cr full CRUD operations on users, deployments, organizations, every aspect of your Astronomer uh, organization, but also the Airflow API and kind of talk about, you know, what that, is, what that covers, how it ties into the Astro API. Um, what each are used for. So I'm going to start this off a little unconventional for live just to show you a couple quick slides um, to kind of introduce the Airflow API and the Astro API. And then I promise I'll get right into good old code um, and some actual use cases. So first thing is if we go to uh, the Airflow API, so it's a REST API, so you can do anything built to do almost anything you can do in the Airflow UI. So triggering DAGs, monitoring status, managing users, creating connections. If you can do it in the Airflow UI, you can do it via the Airflow API. Hey, that rhymes. Um, and so it's fully supported by Airflow, well-documented as long as you're on Airflow 2 dot whatever. Um, it's based on the Swagger and Open API specifications. So obviously Airflow open source at its core had to use an open source API specification. And that means it's easily accessible by third parties, customizable, extendable, just like everything else with Airflow. Uh, and it's also secure. You, know, you can layer on your own authorization capabilities uh, that you'd be using the Airflow UI into the Airflow API. And just to sum it up again, full remote management of everything within your Airflow environments. You can trigger DAGs remotely, task, rerun, retry, um, and really allows you to extend the Airflow, uh, Airflow into other use cases programmatically, like, you know, hey, someone submits a form and then an API request takes the information from that form, passes it to a DAG as a parameter, and then that triggers a DAG run with those specifications. Um, so it opens up a lot of uh, flexibility. Uh, and so that's just, you know, one of those workflows. You also can have cross DAG dependencies. So, you know, one uh, Airflow instance maybe processes some data and then passes it to an ML team. And instead of you needing to, you know, have some rigid link between those two, where, hey, you know, every the deployment B has to constantly pull deployment A, you can actually have deployment A just hit deployment B with an API request, passing that data along uh, and also triggering a DAG to consume and process that data. Um, and so while the Airflow API super good for managing actions within an Airflow environment. It is not really good at managing the underlying resources. I think there are ways you could possibly do it, but it's not really designed for saying, hey, I want to change the compute type, or I want to spin up uh, seven new workers, or change, uh, you know, I want to create a new Airflow environment programmatically. It can't really do those things. Um, so that's where the Astro API comes in, it gives you the ability to fully programmatically manage your Airflow environments. So now you can have an API request that creates a new deployment, creates a new API token, um, creates a new workspace, new user, updates a user, um, bulk manage, maybe you have a list of 20 users you wanna uh, ingest and assign a particular role. You can do that with one API request that just takes that array of, of users. Um, and it, pay, it pairs perfectly with the Airflow API because you're still gonna use the Airflow API for performing all the operations within a specific deployment, but the Astro API kind of meet or fills the functionality gap that the Airflow API had in terms of managing multiple Airflow deployments, managing Airflow kind of at uh, scale and managing all the resources that are needed to actually power your Airflow environments. Uh, and what's also great is there's only one API token you need to use for the Airflow API and the Astro API um, if you're on Strong. So here, you know, quick example, just listing deployments, but I'm gonna show you examples in a second. So just some quick advantages of this and use cases for uh, the Astro API. So number one is advanced CI CD workflows. So now, you know, you can do things like, hey, when someone creates a new branch on GitHub, fire an API request to create a new deployment, create an API token to interact with that, and then run some testing scripts on whatever code that that developer deployed. And that removes the need for one, dedicated developer environment. Now you can just have, you know, every developer has their own uh, personal development environment. And then you can also script administrative tasks and, uh, you know, bulk manage users and permissions. Now also relies on the Airflow API to manage Airflow operations. Um, so since Astro supports the full Airflow API, the Astro API doesn't include any of the functionality within it. Um, so obviously, you know, you're still gonna, because you still have access to the Airflow API, why would we do the double work of creating two APIs? It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, and so now we're done with the slides. So I wanna quick show you just some of the documentation 
um, for the Airflow API, so API Astronomer. Um, so if you want to look how to make any requests, come you can come to the Airflow REST API, and this will just show you how you can make requests to the Airflow API uh, on Astronomer. Let me, let me sorry, resize my window here. Um, so this will just give you an example where, hey, you can either do it via a curl script, you could go with a Python format where you're using the request.post method. Um, you can also use the HTTP operator. Um, so that's really useful if you know, you know you're always going to be triggering a single DAG and you can just bring it in from the connections menu instead of needing to define the whole request.post within your script. Um, and then to go look at the Astra API, you have two actual kind of groupings within the Astra API. So you have the IAM identity and access management schema. And this is going to be all the things related to managing users, managing permissions um, to particular workspaces, uh, teams, creating API tokens. And you can see here teams as well, and also inviting any new users. And you can see kind of example strings here, example payloads. Um, and then the platform API is more for, hey, this is where you're going to be managing clusters. You're going to be creating new deployments, creating new workspaces, uh, getting information about existing deployments. And so if we want to actually go and put these into action, we can switch over to Postman. Oh, actually one more thing. So the way you'll be authenticating for both of these API endpoints. So if you're not using Astro, you'll just use whatever kind of token authentication service you might be using. But if you are using Astro, what you'll do is go to your uh, organization settings and then access management and you can create an API token. Um, and so this can either be scoped to an organization or you can create one under a workspace and that'll basically just dictate what permissions it has access to. So because it's an organization uh, owner, it has access to all the workspace, so all the clusters, deployments, members, um, it can be a billing admin, in which case it'll only have access to information settings and usage of workspaces, but it can't actually manage resources. And then a member is just purely able to log in and view things, but can't actually edit anything um, because you're going to likely want to manage, you know, what access or edit or access your users have on the workspace level, not at the organizational level. So here, let's just say management token. Imagine I'm using this to do CICD, so management CICD token. I'm going to make it a member. So in case any of you are quick with the screen grabs, I uh, don't get in trouble. You can set the expiration to whatever you want. So here, I'm just going to set it for one day and then create API token, and then I'm gonna copy this. So you won't be, uh, get your API token again. Um, it won't be saved. So you know that's just for security reasons, so you can't reopen it. And so now if I go over into Postman to kind of show you how you would build an a one of these API requests. Uh, first you have here, you know, let's say I want to just get a list of my deployments and I wanna surface this in some reporting dashboard or send it out to some other um, system. All I'll do is I define uh, get request. You can see in the header, I have a the astronomer API, so API at astronomer, the platform schema, um, and this is a beta. So make sure very clear, this is not a fully uh, functional API, or it is fully functional, but it's not fully tested. Uh, there are still some kinks, so please bear with us as we build it out, but please also report any issues you run into. Um, and then here after you'll choose your organization ID, deployments, so this is an endpoint that gives us all the deployments in an organization. And then here I can hit send and you'll see here I get all of the different uh, deployments that are in with this organization. And you'll see, I can see their worker queue information, uh, all the different settings they have enabled. And I can also, if I wanted to change any of these could send a uh, post request to post updates to a particular deployment. Um, and so this is the astronomer API. Then also if I want to use that same authorization token, so just put it in the header as authorization bearer and then your token. And then here in my body, what I'm doing is I want to give me all the DAGs from an Airflow environment. Um, and what this will do is give me all the DAGs that are currently in an Airflow environment. And it looks like my token expired. So let's actually use that one I just created. Um, two. Cannot access requested deployment. Well, I don't have access, so I wasn't scoped. Oh, because I'm a member, so I wouldn't have access to that particular deployment. Um, so another really great if you're using can 222. So that's the token I just created a couple seconds ago. So shows up almost immediately. Um, I'm just gonna delete that too. So I don't clog this up, delete my management CICD token. Um, and then what I can do here in one of my workspaces is if I go into my dev, you'll see I have set up two deployments. Um, so this can be in the same workspace. This can be on different clouds. These can be hosted wherever. Um, 
I just wanted to illustrate the point that you can use the Airflow API actually here to link two deployments. So if you want to have that kind of flow, like I described earlier, where one deployment um, finishes processing some data and then kicks off a job in another deployment to ingest that data, what you'll do is you'll have a DAG here. I just my trigger DAG. I'll show you the code where I use that request.post method. You know, I feed it a token, give it a deployment URL, give it the DAG ID I want it to trigger. And you can see just how I built it in Postman. I'm just building it via this request.post method. Um, so here, Jinja templating to dynamically insert the URL, DAG ID, token, and then it's just gonna print the status code and JSON. Um, so I believe this will fail because my token is expired, but I will show you some past runs I did where here in the logs, you'll see, um, once I trigger it, you'll get the return value that, you know, hey, this, you've 